Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on Just Ask Danny. It's a beautiful day here at Disneyland and we're going to go over what's new and what's happening at the Disneyland Resort the week before Halloween season. They've actually removed the platinum or silver Disney 100 statue which is right here because they got to make room for the pumpkin that's coming soon. We'll see that show up sometime this next week as the Halloween season starts on Friday, September 1st. And we're also less than a week away from the opening of San Francisco Square, which opens at Disney California Adventure officially August 31st. So everything should be wrapped up and completed at that point, including the new gift shop being open, the meet and greet with Baymax and Hiro, all the new food options. So there's quite a few things to check out and look at today at Disneyland, but we're going to also check out some other new things. And maybe I'll even check out some of the Halloween merchandise. I don't normally cover merchandise, but uh, I know Halloween season brings some special stuff with it. So lots to check out today. Make sure you've already hit the like button on this video and make sure you're subscribed as well for future content. First up over here in Fantasy Fair, a uh, little bit of exterior work on some of the buildings, um, although the Royal Hall is still open for princess meet and greets, as well as the Royal Theater. But I'm going to continue on over here to Frontierland and, of course, through the Adventureland main entrance um, to head over to what we know is coming next, which is Tiana's Palace Restaurant. And, of course, check on some of the progress, as we always do, on Tiana's uh, Bayou Adventure attraction. So we'll head there next. Over here, right in front of the main entrance of Adventureland, they had a little bit of unplanned maintenance on all this ground right in front of the restroom since they had a water main burst, pipe burst, just outside the restrooms over here in Adventureland. Looks like the majority of that's been repaired. A little bit of a wall left, but now both restrooms are open again, men and women's restrooms. So those are available again and all pathways are opened up. Totally a really bad time for it to happen. It really affected pathways the last couple weeks but it's all open again so i'm heading next through adventureland we'll make a quick stop over by the uh adventureland treehouse to check that out as well too on our way over to tiana's palace restaurant like i mentioned last time when we were here uh we saw well i guess not necessarily on a video but if you follow me on twitter or i guess now x uh or threads you know that they started to deconstruct all this scaffolding um, and I said, well, we'll have to wait and see if that's actually going to be permanent. And it looks like it wasn't. They erected some more scaffolding around some of the other pieces they're adding on to the Adventureland Treehouse. So we saw all the scaffolding come down. We thought, oh man, maybe it's close to opening. Doesn't look quite there just yet. They're doing some finishing work on it. Added some more scaffolding here. Um, whereas when I was here last weekend on the weekend of the hurricane, uh, there was this was actually all gone. So new little addition over here in Adventureland Treehouse. We're not quite there yet. Made our way over here to the New Orleans uh, train station to check out Tiana's Palace restaurant, which looks closer and closer to opening. Uh, of course, we know the restaurant opens on September 7th, and it's going to be um, available for mobile order and of course, quick service to go. Uh, this is not a table service restaurant where you make dining reservations. Some new things added are like the little logo here for the restaurant. And you can see straight through here, I'm gonna zoom in now. There's the mint julep bar that everyone knows and loves. It's gonna be remaining the same as usual. You can see the old logo right over there and then the new one on the corner there. So mint julep bar remains the same. And then you can see all the patio furniture they've added. It looks very different from before. Also over here in New Orleans Square is Haunted Mansion is closed, of course, to turn into Haunted Mansion Holiday, which is going to be opening this Friday, September 1st, for the Halloween season. Keep in mind that last year this attraction opened early before its scheduled opening date. Um, so if you're here next week, check before September 1st. It doesn't hurt to check because um, it might be open because from the outside, it basically looks like everything's done. It's all decorated, ready to go. Of course, that could be a very different thing on the inside, but like I said, if you are here vacationing, taking your trip to Disneyland the week before Halloween season kicks off on September 1st, it's worth checking out because uh, last year they beat by quite a few days and opened the attraction early. Over here at Tiana's Bayou Adventure, there doesn't seem to be that many differences from 
you know, more recent times. Obviously, they're doing their best to smooth out the top and add that new grass hill look that this is going to have, the dome look for um, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And it looks like some of the wood has been stripped um, on the original incline or lift hill of the attraction as they plan to probably repaint it or restain it with something new. Uh, but they've actually added like a debris chute over here and over here. So as they're deconstructing stuff, they can just slide it on down the debris chutes. Uh, it's kind of funny, would love to see that in action, but it doesn't seem like there's anyone um, working on it today at least. And you can see right where we were just standing, they have of course the wall still erected over here, over here and over here, just to kind of keep private what they're still working on as far as right after when you first drop down on um, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So really kind of been the same where we've seen on the outside. Like I said, there's probably so much going on on the inside and behind the scenes. Um, it's worth walking over to Pooh Corner though, just to see if anything's a little bit different, if any changes have happened to anything over there. So that'll be our next stop. Over just outside over here in Pooh's Corner, the uh, penny press machine for Splash Mountain still is here. It's not out of order, it's ready and available. You've got three choices still. Like I mentioned, we don't know how long this is gonna stay here. People asked me the last time if that was still up, so wanted to show it. But as far as on this side, there's not much change. They have the little debris chute back here as well. Um, but as far as attraction construction, looks the same as it did before. Some like tags for things being added and taken away. Um, don't even know if any of this kind of facade or building fits in with the New Orleans or southern salt mine theme potentially could um, i would imagine they're probably not doing too much deconstruction work on some of the existing infrastructure it seems like more of an uh of a light retheme uh with more of like a deeper retheme on the inside so the outside probably is staying pretty close to what we already saw based on the model at d23 and everything just so they can kind of keep the overarching theme of this side of the park and not changing it too much. But I think that wraps up any of the updates over here in New Orleans, Critter Country area. So I'm gonna head over to the other half of Disneyland before we leave this park and head over to Disney California Adventure. Over here in Toontown, I wanted to make a quick stop over by Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin because Disney actually just teased one of the brand new villains coming to Oogie Boogie Bash this year for the event that starts on September 5th. And it definitely seems like it was pointing towards Judge Doom from Roger Rabbit. Who framed Roger Rabbit movie? Of course, if you've been on Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin, you're all familiar with Dip, the liquid that basically kills all tunes. And uh, that was what basically Disney had teased in their little teaser a big bucket of dip and as we know if you've seen the movie it's kind of an old one uh, it features the villain judge doom who's pretty scary actually so i think it's a really good choice for an addition to boogie boogie bash and then of course another monster or villain that they teased was yokai seemingly from san francisco square but we'll talk about that when we head over to disney california adventure park Another little bit of construction over here in Toontown is over at Donald's Boat. They're finally working on Donald's Duck Pond, uh, which never opened with the land back earlier this year. But it looks like they're starting construction on it now. Um, it's still hot and it's going to be hot right through September and October. So depending on when they can get that open, um, it'll be a welcome addition over here in Toontown. seems like all the kids are crowding around the fountain to get their cooling off moment. The uh, little jungle gym equipment here that used to swing back and forth, they're still gone, removed from this area. Looks like little things keep being added, keep being taken away at Toontown. It's still kind of always ever evolving um, and it'll probably continue to do so as, uh, you know, um, they iron out some of the details, things start to break or wear out. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it all. Uh, the fountain, though, has definitely been a huge welcome addition in this summer and now early fall heat. Um, kids love interacting with it. All the elements are working. The jumping fountains on the bottom. 
Kids can splash in the fountain, push down on the lily pads to squirt up. The top fountain's kind of squirting down on everyone, so it's really a great addition and uh, honestly probably the big highlight of Toontown besides the main attraction. It's so hot out here today, I had to get a slushy. So I got one of the slushies over at uh, Pluto's Market. Got cherry and Coca-Cola mixed together. Man, it's, I feel like it's in the high 90s over here. And it's gonna keep getting hotter. It's just sort of the trend in California. Usually September is our hottest month. There's always that record-breaking triple digit temperatures in Anaheim in September, like early September. And we're like almost at that date. So right on track for how we usually are. I decided to leave Disneyland at an unfortunate time. I left during the middle of the Magic Happens Parade, but I finally made my way over to Disney California Adventure Park and check out all the Halloween decorations up. We don't have any of that over at Disneyland just yet, but they're already ready to go over here at Disney California Adventure. And again, Halloween season starts on September 1st. Although a lot of the items on the food guide for Halloween season start before then so definitely check out the food guide if you haven't already some of the items start as early as august 29th so starting on tuesday of this upcoming week but let's go ahead and head over now to san francisco square um, to check out the construction there because we're just days away at this point from everything supposedly being finally done and opening up on august 31st Headed inside San Francisco Square now. You can see they're just about done on almost everything. And I mentioned earlier how Disney teased the villains coming to Oogie Boogie Bash. They actually showcased this area right here in front of the bakery tour as they teased what looked like it was gonna be Yokai coming to uh, Oogie Boogie Bash, who's the villain from Big Hero 6. You can see, look at all this new Japanese writing here. And of course, on top of Ghirardelli, they have a brand new sign added says Ghirardelli and I think it says chocolate in Japanese. They've got some more writing just about all over added to different areas throughout the land. Right away we can see more changes up here. It used to say Pacific Wharf Canning Company. It now has Japanese writing. We've got a little mural over here which was teased in Disney Parks advertisements for uh, showing the new Baymax uh, sourdough bread coming which I don't know if they have that for sale just yet. doesn't look like it. Looks like they just got some Mickey Mouse heads still on sale. Of course, all the changes they added to Rita's turbine blenders. They even got the power line going across now over here to uh, Aunt Cass's Cafe. Now they have signage for Aunt Cass's Cafe, but it's not unveiled just yet. Same with uh, over on the front of the building. They have the signage as a temporary tarp covering it, but it's covering the Aunt Cassis Cafe signage. Now, as we make our way back over to the back part of San Francisco Square, which is the port of San Francisco, of course, the cerveceria has been opened already. People love it. It's a great spot. I think it's way better than the beer cart used to be. Really nice location. You've got all the old locations here for Cocina Cucamonga. We're gonna have the meet and greet location straight ahead right over there. And then on the right over here is gonna be the merchandise location. But you can see the signs peeking over the at top of the fence there. So we're basically ready to go. I think they just need to pull the fence down at this point. And again, August 31st is the grand opening for San Francisco Square. So we can expect the Big Hero 6 meet and greet to be open all the food options to be available. And of course, the merchandise location open and maybe we'll see brand new San Francisco Square specific merchandise, which is what a lot of people are hoping for. But let's go ahead and check out the bridge next out front on the other side of the land. Over here outside San Francisco Square, you can see the bridge is just about done. So really nothing left here except for some final touches. We have some of the decorations that still needed to be added over here outside of Aunt Cass's Cafe. You can actually see the popcorn lighting hanging, 
those are actually gonna have little Baymax lanterns attached to them. So they're just kind of like light bases at this point, but they're gonna have little Baymax lanterns to, uh, attached to them if we're to believe the uh, artwork that we previously received for the land before it opened. And then on the other side of the bridge, which we can't see here, but we'll head over to in just a second, they haven't installed the Port of San Francisco signage just yet either. And here's a little bit of a closer look at the bridge. You can see they've got all the pieces in play. Right now they're just adding the cabling work that's gonna go from one to the other. I don't know if the cable is gonna feature any popcorn lighting. I don't remember if it did in the artwork or not, but they are currently attaching that right now and the final decorative pieces to the bridge. And like I mentioned, we're gonna walk around to the other side so you can see Port of San Francisco where that's gonna be. Now over on the other side, like I mentioned, this is the Port of San Francisco side. Doesn't look like there's any prep work at all um, to add the lettering, but it's actually gonna be all along the fence over here and it's gonna say Port of San Francisco. Um, so I, I can't see physically any evidence of that being added just yet, but we still have the rest of this week to add any last details to the land as it prepares to open, but it's looking really, really good. All right, so I came over here for our last stop to Disney California Adventure to check out um, Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, which has been fully set up for the most part for Villains Grove at Oogie Boogie Bash. And it looks like a lot of the same. So same decoration set up for the Frollo segment from Hunchback of Notre Dame. You can see one of the projectors in play right here um, that's gonna be projecting different scenes on the rock work throughout the different attraction. Over here, of course, was the uh, Maleficent segment. The projection behind me was what projects on that. You can see they've also added to um, some lighting fixtures and things like that throughout, like right over here and also up here too. Some other lighting fixtures over here. And then of course, this section right here is usually for the Cheshire Cat. Um, and then they typically have the signage here which is all covered up that has like different Alice in Wonderland themed signage but more importantly back here we already see set up for um, the red roses or at least the white roses that get painted red when you're back here for the evil queen or not the evil queen but the queen of hearts segment of villains Grove. so they've already got the roses back here all set up ready to be lit up different lighting fixtures added all onto the tower here and then as we know in the past this whole section down here was themed to scar and the lion king lots of different themes all throughout the whole attraction from first glance it doesn't really look like um, there is anything that's changed from previous year so i think it's safe to go out on a limb and say that it's probably going to be the same version of villains grove that we've seen in the past but that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's a really great attraction. Not everyone has had a chance to experience it yet in its current version. You can see more lighting fixtures added here. Then we'll continue on down on this side. And you can see on this side, this is the Evil Queen segment from Snow White. And it has the lighting that goes up and down the trees, which creates the lightning effect uh, that they normally have. Now on this side, in the theater, they actually have it set up for like the central control system of all the different electronic components that have been added. So it's all closed off and it's going to remain closed off because they have like, it's basically like the big control center for everything. And you can see this is usually the finale segment of Villains Grove. You're walking through, there's just laser lights everywhere, all in the trees. And they have the projection box here, which usually projects some sort of kind of mystical garden moment on this big log. And of course, all the lighting and lasers that get projected into the trees from these little segments here. So it looks pretty similar to what we've seen before. The same setup, a little bit of a cleanup needs to be done here post the hurricane, I guess. <laughs> a lot of pine needles everywhere, but... Um, and then normally you just kind of walk out this direction into the fog and back out into the event. So looks very similar to what we've seen before. They could surprise us with some new additions, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. But all in all, I'm really excited to see it come back, and I'll definitely be checking it out when I come on September 5th. 
But I think now we can head to Downtown Disney and the resort hotels to wrap up this what's new and what's happening at Disneyland. Being just days away from the Halloween season starting next week on Friday, um, the display inside Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa still is the Disney 100 display. They don't have anything set up over here for desserts or snacks just quite yet. Um, but with a week away, I think it's safe to say that they're probably not going to change it out to the Oogie Boogie display of years past. Or maybe they do and they get it a little bit later um, in the Halloween season in the month of October. But we might just hang on to the Disney 100 celebration display for the time being. And of course the snack display that we just saw a second ago is going to have specialty treats for Halloween season but they haven't been set up just yet. That's gonna be starting next week, sometime in the middle of the week and continuing through the Halloween season. So, but now I'm gonna head on over to Disney's Pixar Place Hotel or Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel. Get some updates there, wrap up the hotels over at the Disneyland Hotel, and then we'll go through downtown Disney making our way back as we finish off this update for what's new and what's happening. From across the way, it's usually a better vantage point of what's going on over at the Great Maple Restaurant. You can see they've got the full house frame on the outside added to the front of the restaurant. They've really done a lot of work. I saw some of them working on this last week, but looks like it's all since completed. It looks really, really good. But let's head on over to the lobby right across the street. Here's a little bit of a closer look now that we've crossed the street. You can see the rooftop structure there for the Great Maple Restaurant, which is modern American cuisine. And we also heard that room construction for the remodel of all the rooms at this hotel has finally started. They were a little bit behind on this. I don't know what the delay was for, um, but they had a little bit of a delay. Most of the other projects are already completed at the hotel, but the rooms were sort of lagging behind. So they've been redoing the rooms section by section and you can see actually right here where the rooms have been completed because the windows are blue the old window tint is brown the new window tint is a blue color and uh, they already have some of that completed on the other side so lots of work still being done on this hotel although a lot of things are already done rooms haven't been renovated yet and until we see a lot more rooms renovated of course the new sign we won't see the hotel change its branding to Disney's Pixar Place Hotel. Over in the lobby of the hotel, the cafe, the lobby space, TV area, and the gift shop still remained unchanged since basically the unveiling of the brand new space. The gift shop still doesn't have a brand new name yet, it's just labeled as the hotel gift shop. So until the hotel's rebranding is complete, I don't think they can adopt any of the Pixar naming just quite yet. Um, but let's check out the pool area. And here's a look at the new pool space all open. We have the new Nemo Cove area over here with the crush slide. We have the main pool space and all the new cabanas that were added. And then of course over here we have the pool deck which is going to play a host to some games when they open up later. And then the bar which hasn't opened yet is over here with its seating and fireplace back there. But it looks really, really good. What do you guys think? Over here at the Disneyland Hotel, just made my way over, right outside Tangaroa Terrace, um, facing the pool, they've actually basically completely tore up and removed the patio that's for dining for Tangaroa Terrace around the corner there. So we're gonna go ahead and check out what that's all about first before we head to the Discovery Tower around back to check out that. You can see from just outside the restaurant here, the bar window is still open, the inside of the restaurant is still open, but the side patio and all the front patio is completely closed off. So there's no real place to dine um, over at Tangaro Terrace, except for a small few spaces on the inside. And you can see out here, the construction continues all the way out and around the corner. And from the other side, you can't really see what's going on other than they've got some scaffoldings basically erected to the side. I'm not sure if they're planning on expanding it. It might make sense, right? They're adding a brand new tower with hundreds of rooms 
lots of new guests and no new dining options. The Discovery Tower is going to have a brand new bar location just off the pool, but that's not going to be a major food service location. So um, the additional dining space might be required over here. Um, so if they are truly expanding the dining patio for Tangaroa Terrace, it's definitely a welcome change. It was already needed with just the capacity they already had. Then over at the pool, you can see too, they're also renovating and redoing the slide. So making sure everything looks really good and fresh and new for when the Discovery Tower opens on September 28th. We're just basically about a month away starting next week. First thing we notice when we first walk in through security is the new construction for Din Tai Fung, which is confirmed as the Din Tai Fung location coming to downtown Disney as well as the new entertainment stage right over here. And they're doing some construction work on all of the pavement outside of ESPN zone to have that new style, new look that the rest of downtown Disney, at least on this West end is gonna have. Uh, so soon we'll probably be saying goodbye to this live stage that's been sort of temporary, but used for quite a bit of years over here in Disneyland Resort as they make way for a more permanent location right here and the new parts of downtown Disney. And you can see here just what that new pavement looks like that they're working on in front of ESPN zone. It's got that new kind of modern, mid-century modern look, which this whole West end of downtown Disney is really gonna be sporting. And then I also wanted to call out too, when you're walking from downtown Disney, normally you would have continued on that direction to the hotel, but now you're actually gonna be curving this way. The stage is gonna be inviting you in, there's gonna be some more shops and restaurants this way, and you're gonna be going that direction. So downtown Disney's gonna be taking a big left-hand turn if you're coming from the theme parks um, in a way that it hasn't before. So it's really changing the footprint of downtown Disney as it was first created in 2001. But another change is coming up next right over here, and I wanna show you what that's all about. And that next thing that I wanted to show you was the downtown Disney monorail station, which is sporting an all new look. Now they didn't do any structural work to the station itself. It still has the overarching garden theme on it. You can see this is actually still themed to a giant leaf folded over, which matches the garden theme of downtown Disney past. You can see the leaves over there are bending over as well too. So all they really did is just paint all the accents being bright blue and silver so that it matches the more mid-century modern vibes and brighter colors that are coming to the west end of downtown Disney on this side. So the monorail is still going to be remaining closed through August 31st. September 1st will be the first day of the operation of the monorail, um, but keep in mind everything is subject to change. That could change. They could be delayed on this. We just don't know. But as of right now, the monorail station is closed with the monorail through August 31st. But what do you think of the new monorail station colors? Do you like the blue and the silver? Do you like that downtown Disney is sort of ditching this garden theme here? You can see another planter that's direct, basically shaped like a giant leaf. That garden theme of downtown Disney is going to be leaving and they're going to be moving away from that uh, as we start to get more of a modern feel and honestly more of a look of how Disney Springs is in Walt Disney World Resort, where it's more of like a higher end shopping mall. You know, Disney is attracting a lot more um, higher end crowd with the restaurants and places they're choosing. The Jazz Kitchen went for a more upscale look, definitely increasing their prices along with it and changing their menu. Din Tai Fung is another restaurant coming with a very high end clientele and menu. Um, it is a more expensive restaurant. It is a higher end restaurant in like places like China and stuff like that, where it comes from. Um, the other location closest to Disneyland is in South Coast Plaza. It's still definitely affordable and I absolutely will be going there, but it's definitely on the higher end of things that used to be here before. And then of course, straight ahead that we're walking to right now is the Paseo restaurant and Centrico bar, uh, which are also going to be more on the higher end of when it comes to dining. It's gonna be led by Michelin star chef, uh, Carlos Gaitan. So you know that restaurant's gonna be expensive uh, and it's gonna have a very high-end menu. So definitely going for a different kind of vibe and crowd than they had before when they first opened downtown Disney. But what do you guys think? 
And then I wanted to show this side over here by Pele and Love Pop as we look at the construction of Paseo and Centrico. Now there's some people that have said, uh, in the rumor mill anyway, that they think that this is a permanent closure and that there will no longer be access through this way like it used to be um, around the bar. Now, I don't think that's the case. I think the whole idea and concept of the word centrico means it's in the center, right? So I think it's gonna remain as is, and it's gonna be um, just like it was with Uva Bar where you could walk all the way around. But let me know what you think in the comments. If you think you're gonna be able to walk all the way around or if you've heard the opposite of that, um, but again, Centrico and Paseo are opening in 2024, so we're not going to be seeing those this year. Um, they're going to be opening sometime next year, and it hasn't been, doesn't say anywhere on the walls anyway that it's opening early next year or what, but it looks like there's a lot of work still left to be done. So I did promise you that I would check out some of the Halloween merchandise, and I uh, figured I'd wrap up this what's new and what's happening at Disneyland over here at World of Disney to show you the Halloween merchandise. Uh, that they've got going on this year for 2023. Starting off first with this year's spirit jersey. It's gonna be bright orange. It's got the new pumpkin kind of neon logos on it. And then on the front side, it has the Disneyland D and the neon colors. Not a big fan of this myself, but uh, it's definitely, um, it's been really popular. A lot of people have been wearing it actually. And again, the whole motif of this Halloween season this year is going to be this like sort of neon vibe. They got bright neon colors and your typical kind of Halloween style. Everything sort of matches that vibe. They brought these back. These have been popular in past years. More of that like neon vibe. You can see right here they got the lounge fly in that neon color scheme. They even have Crocs. <laughs> in the same colorway, a hat. And then here's a new, look at the new ears. It's got bat mini on it in that neon color scheme with like a little fuzzy ears. And then here's another t-shirt here with bat mini. Here's a look at some more of the merch. This is like a little decorative piece you can put on your mantle. The candle actually flickers when you turn it on. They got, uh, a new candle display here, sort of still in that neon colorway. They have more of the same logo design here. Lots of things. What do you guys think of the Halloween merch this season? Oh, looks like we got a new um, trick or treat bucket too. This also lights up, has that new Mickey style that's been on all the new logos. They always have a new one of these every year and they are very, very popular. Yeah, what do you guys think of all the new Halloween merch this year? Are you feeling it? I definitely think it's better than last year, in my opinion. And they also have a brand new uh, Hocus Pocus collection, too, that they added a bunch of stuff. We didn't have this last year, and they got a ton of Hocus Pocus things. But yeah, that wraps up the merchandise, so let's continue on out of World of Disney uh, and wrap up this update. And lastly, for the update, I wanted to show over here the Earl of Sandwich Tavern and temporary Earl of Sandwich location. So we knew again that this was only going to be temporary uh, when they first reopened it and Disney announced that uh, La Brea Bakery was closed. So Earl of Sandwich is again temporarily holding this space, but we don't know when it's going to actually be closing. And I would imagine, um, given that we've been given an 18-month window um, on how long the transformation of Downtown Disney is going to take, it's going to have to close sometime in the next, I would say, six months. So. Suffice it to say, it might be worth your while to come to Earl of Sandwich uh, in the next few months, especially through the end of the year, to get your last sandwiches, especially that holiday sandwich if you love it. Uh, Earl of Sandwich is going to be leaving this location eventually, and then they're going to tear the whole thing down to build a brand new location for Portos Bakery uh, at the very end of Downtown Disney here. So, but that wraps up this what's new and what's happening at Disneyland Resort. I hope you really enjoyed following me along on this very hot journey through all of Disneyland Resort today. If you um, liked what you saw, go ahead and leave a comment below. Make sure to like the video as well. And again, make sure you're subscribed. We have so many things coming up, including the brand new grand opening of San Francisco Square when it's all said and done. 
the Tiana's Palace restaurant. I'll be here for that. We've got Halloween Horror Nights on the horizon. Not Scary Farm after that. Lots of things coming. So make sure you're subscribed for all that theme park content. Um, I'm going to be making an Oogie Boogie Bash guide as a follow-up from my guide from previous years. I know a lot of people love that. People are still watching that and commenting on it to this day for those that are preparing for this year's Oogie Boogie Bash. So I hope to go this year, make a new guide video, show you how to get the best of your visit when you're going to Oogie Boogie Bash. But thanks again so much for watching this video and uh, we'll see you in the next update coming soon. Mm -hmm.